Welcome back to Gator Games Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined here by Johnny Kyo of the Limerick Leader. We're here, obviously, to preview this weekend's All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship final between Limerick and Kilkenny. Obviously, a repeat of last year's All Ireland final. Limerick and Kilkenny clashing horns once again. Johnny, first of all, how's things with yourself? And uh, I suppose excitement very much building around the Treaty County going into this one. Yeah, well, number one, things are good. Yeah, of course they're good. They're looking forward to another All Ireland. Things are great. Yeah, the excitement has, has really started to hit fever pitch. You know, like I, I think tomorrow and Saturday are going to be really, really atmosphere wise around the, the city and county. Like it, it's going to hit a new level, but really excited. You know, it, it's it's a thing Limerick fans are getting used to being in All Ireland finals and hopefully again on Sunday from our point of view, winning All Ireland finals. But yeah, all in all, it's been. It's been great. Nice, like nice chilled out build up since the since the Galway game, but this week has definitely stepped up another notch. Yeah, and what's the build up like around Limerick, or what's it been like speaking with fans, or I suppose media and everything else, players, manager. Obviously, seen John Coyley sort of speaking during the week, and he was saying how it was all got to do with the players and not so much got to do with him. But what's the build up been like from I suppose a fan point of view, and also you know as part of the media as well. Yeah, fan point of view, it, it's literally, you know, the big screens around town have, have been sorted. Usually the, the Gaelic Grounds was the, was hosting um, the big screen. That's going to happen in the middle of the city now. So that's a focal point for fans. And obviously with the banquet not happening this year for either team, win, lose or draw. So if there is a homecoming on the Monday, it's going to be in the same place where the big screen is inside in Perry Square. So that kind of aspect of it has given it a new life with the council organising that. Uh, media point of view, we, we did the media night with Limerick, with, with John Kiley, as you said, Mike Casey and David Reedy. That was, that was I think, the Monday after the Galway game. So it's a couple, nearly a couple of weeks now. So that's the way they like to do things in the run-up to the Honor final, get rid of it early and then move on. But talking to the lads, um, you know, back then even, you know, I was just after the Galway game. Um, a lot, lot, lot of things have happened since, I'm sure, within the camp. But... Yeah, like again, I'll go back to say that there is excitement around the players and management are taking it and saying it. And then you have to believe them at this stage saying that it is just another game for them. You know, it, it is just, we know like we're focused on playing Kilkenny in a couple of weeks time. And, and yeah, it's an All-Ireland final, but they're, they're not in the in the frame of building up the final too much. And I think they know at this stage they're so experienced that if they play to their level and get the performance that they are capable out, they should it should be enough to win them the game. And that's been the difference in the last four to five, six years with this Limerick team is if they play well, they invariably win. Absolutely, yeah. And obviously Limerick and Kilkenny in the in the final last year, and obviously same again going into the final this year. Like, do you think there'll be anything different in in this final, maybe compared with the the final of last year? It's it's an interesting one, Aaron. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell. That was such a tight game last year. Um, I thought last year T. J. Reid really had a, a very very good game for Kilkenny. Didn't do a huge amount from play, but he was so accurate from freeze. And that's one thing Limerick really need to look at um, on Sunday. Like and Owen Cody's form from Kilkenny's point of view, Owen Cody has been off the charts. One five from play in the semi final against Clare, really has taken on the mantle of captain of the team as well. I think it was something like the 52nd minute last year he was taken off. Don't see that happening in the final this year. But differences-wise, I, th I think, you know, Aaron Gillan has certainly come into the come into the final. He was in good form last year. He's in even better form last year. I think he had a bit of a niggle um, in that game last year. His movement was very much curtailed and gave you Lawler a, a chance to dominate, and which he did for a large part of that game on Aaron. But he looks unmarkable at the moment. No one has been able to handle him um, so far in the, in the in both the Munster Championship and now the the All Ireland semi final against Galway. Uh, Kilkenny's point of view, they, like they have a stronger bench. Maybe we haven't one guy we haven't seen who featured so much in the league was their under twenty star was Billy Drennan. Hasn't been seen much in the championship, if anything at all. You know that they, they, they the likes of Tom Feeling at wing forward, who's different from last year. A little bit of jiggery poker in the middle with. With Connor Fogarty and, and Adrian Mullen and then Keen Kenny as well coming into that. But I think I think the biggest thing, and, and it has to be said, it's going to be the same as last year. You're going to have Tommy Walsh and Seamus Flanagan. You're going to have you Lawler and Aaron Galan. I think that's fairly well set up at this stage. And Mikey Butler on either Peter Casey or Graham Mulcahy, whichever John John Kiley wants to start. 
So they're, they're the key key matchups for me. But one guy who 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 kind of goes under the radar at times with Limerick is Daryl Donovan, and his form has been out. So I know he got man of the match in the semi final. Like I don't think that was his best game this year, but he's just so he was so good in the Munster final, and he's just hitting a new level of. You know, of performance and the standard of performance is so high. Dovetail so well with William O'Donoghue in the middle. Obviously, we'll probably chat about Declan Hanna later on and, and where, if he's going to play and if he's not, and what will Limerick do. Uh, they, they seem to just have options off the bench. They, they've Cahill O'Neill and David Reedy have, have stood up again this year. David Reedy starting the last two games. Cahill O'Neill has started games and come, come on. I think the physicality he brought against Galway was massive. And they do have Graham Mulcahy or Peter Casey, which everyone does as there. Adam English is a young star coming into the Limerick setup as well. You know, depth-wise, like as I said, we'll talk about Hannon in a while. And, and you know, Sean Finn's obviously going to be a loss as well. But but going back to your original question, you know, changes-wise, differences, I think, I think Limerick forwards, funnily enough, they've been so reliant on the half-forward line for so long. Tom Marcy's had a very good year. Garrod Hegarty's had a good year. Kind of came into more form against Galway probably than that than at any other time of the year and that's dangerous for Kilkenny like he scored one five from playing last year's final and just effectively won the game for Limerick just got him over the line in the end you know Garrod loves playing in Croke Park so you know I, I think if David Blanchfield from from what I was hearing I was at a uh, fundraiser thing during the week and Paul Murphy was saying that David Blanch, Blanchfield has a punctured lung picked up against um against Clare I think it was only registered a couple of days later that it was that serious he'd be a loss because he would have been detailed Mark Tom Morrissey probably with Paddy Deegan on Garrod and, and maybe even vice, switching that around because Paddy Deegan had a torrid time marking Garrod last year and Richie Reid is likely to to sit. I just think, and again we'll be going to proper predictions later on, but I just think Limerick are even maybe just coming into more form you know, in this game heading into this year's final than they were last year. Galway gave them an almighty test in the semi-final last year and that was really anyone's game going down the stretch. Where Limerick had the game sewn up, 15 minutes to play in this semi final, and kind of hitting the ball around, holding on to possession. The game is won, and you know, they were able to, to really go through their processes of holding on to possession, creating space up in the full forward line. So I think maybe Limerick coming into a bit of form, and then you just don't know where Kilkenny are. They struggle to the win over Clare, and, and that's not being disrespectful to what Kilken, Kilkenny do. If Kilkenny don't play well and still win, it's typical Kilkenny. But they weren't at their best against Clare, and all, all but for an own Murphy wonder save. We could be talking about Limerick Clare final here, and Clare, you know, just just maybe didn't get things right on the sideline themselves. And then you look at Kilkenny in the Leinster final against Galway, and there was a huge element of luck that saw them to that victory too. So there's an argument there that we don't know where Kilkenny are really coming into the final, but we know it'll be a huge, huge test for Limerick. But Limerick probably just hitting form right now. Yeah, like, and I suppose, yeah, because it's, it's a little bit different, obviously, going into the final this time around. Like, Kilkenny obviously wiped the floor with Clare last year, and obviously this year it's a lot closer, whereas Limerick last year very close with Galway, but this year going in, I suppose, having, having beaten Galway, Galway quite comfortably. But I suppose that final last year, like, it was such a titanic game, like Kilkenny scoring 226, Limerick scoring 131. It was end-to-end. -end. Like, you couldn't say any team played poorly. Like, both, both sets of players gave their absolute best and could we see something like that again like an absolute rip roaring game like both sides just going full throttle or could there be maybe a bit more i suppose tactical now sort of implemented a bit more in this game yeah it's the million dollar question really you're gonna find it very hard to replicate everything from last year it was that way it was one of the great finals of such a good game both sides showed up and that's what you want in a final from a neutral's point of view I think the, the big difference last year and this year, one of the big differences will be the weather. I mean, we, we were hitting something close to 30 degrees Celsius in Croker, you know, mm. last year. That's not going to be the case with, with this weekend with a lot of rain. Maybe not a lot of rain, but rain certainly scheduled for the weekend. That will have an impact on, on pretty much everything, I'd say, with, to do with the game. We have both semifinals in, in glorious sunshine as well a couple of weeks ago. So that, that will be a factor. You know, tactics-wise, has Derek Ling done a lot different from Brian Cody? Yes. I think you're seeing Richie Reid drop more. Maybe not in a sweeper position or something similar to what Declan Annan 
does with Limerick is just drops in front of that full back line. And it's a twofold reason. He's doing it to protect the full back line goals wise. He's also doing it to try and distribute. And Richie Reid is one of the best distributors that Kenny have, can cause a lot of damage from centre back and can also go on the run from centre back. So I think that there's a lot of similarities by the way the two teams set up. I mean, we saw them in the league final. That was a dummy game. I mean, you wouldn't look be looking at back to anything in the league final, you know, to 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 preview Sunday's game. So yeah, it's going to be very difficult to replicate that game. It was one of the great finals last year. Um, it could be though, you know, they're, they're, like both teams will go hell for leather at it. I think they're two, they're two physical teams. I mean, that's been said of Limerick, obviously, over their recent successful period. But I've never seen a non-physical like any team. They hit you with everything that they have. They did it in 2019 for Limerick in the first 20 minutes and blitzed them in the All Ireland semi final, you know. And they look to do the same thing again. I think Limerick are more well versed in that now. They've learned an awful lot from that game. Um, you know, four years ago now. So, yeah, I think it, it, it does have so much potential to be a cracking game. And, and, you know, from the neutrals' point of view, absolutely hope so. I couldn't care less if it's good, bad or indifferent once Limerick are on the, the winning side of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Mike says here it will be a tough game, but I think Limerick are just coming at the right time. We see what Limerick can do, like the second half against Galway. I suppose it's a good point. Like, I mean, like I feel like all year with Limerick, there there's certainly been ups and downs. And obviously through the Munster Championship, the defeat to Clare, the draw with Tipperary, and then obviously beating Cork. But I suppose at the time, we weren't even sure if that would be good enough for Limerick to even get to a, a Munster final. But it seemed like something switched in that game against Galway in the first half going into the final 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, it was like Limerick just shifted the gears and went back to the Limerick we very much knew like what 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 do you think changed in that game that got Limerick into gear or, or, or what do you think it was that sort of saw Limerick just turn it on again because it's the it's a sign of a phenomenal team really the fact that like not, I wouldn't say they were poor or anything like that but just obviously we judge Limerick at such high standards and then they just turned it on just like that and they were unplayable really yeah like to answer your question what changed? I think Limerick have been close all year to getting to that, what they did against Galway in that end of first half, first 15 minutes of the second half. They've had chances in games in the court game, they had chances in the, in the start of the second half in the Tipperary game to really take off for a number of reasons that didn't happen. Things just weren't fully clicking. No one could say different. You know, they, they should have beaten Waterford a lot more comfortably. Kind of bit of sloppiness that in you, Gerard Higgerty getting a second yellow then obviously followed by a red, but they missed four or five goal chances against Waterford that hasn't been talked about, that the game would have been over. Um, second game against against Clare, Clare were the better team. I mean, there's no argument. Nicky Quaid made a couple of saves that day that, that did keep the score down and Seamus Flanagan's goal kind of gave Limerick a little bit of hope in the last few seconds, but there was no argument that Clare were the better team in that game. Into the Tipperary game, there was a couple of weeks break. You kind of didn't know. No, we no one knew where they were. They, 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 maybe the the way the league went and, and, and just the, the condensed nature of how quickly the championship comes around now. Limerick obviously winning the league, leading Kilkenny in that final. And they did go hell for leather for the league this year. It was, it was an interesting departure from what we've seen in previous couple of years. Wild blooding players that were still managing to win a lot of games. And then, then you know, you had that court game. Limerick, they, they had chances to go further ahead. And in the end, they finished a one-point game. You know, and they came out the other side of it. Munster final, the same. Everyone complains about Clare. You know, that 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 decision at the end that didn't get Clare a free. Clare had plenty of chances to be winning that game. But there was a period where Limerick had a chance to go five or six points up and had a couple of bad wides from long range. And then there wouldn't have been an issue at the end of the game, whether a free was given or not. And I think just to, to get to the semi-final then, obviously the, the win and Tipperary's defeat to Waterford got Limerick into the Munster final. But then getting on to the semi-final, you know, they were all at sea. It looked in the first 20 minutes. Galway were getting into pockets of space behind the half-back line and were able to pick off scores. Brilliant moving from Galway. But Limerick just tightened up. And and sometimes it is as simple as that, that they just stopped the flow of ball coming in as easy. So the half-forward line was working harder. The midfielders were working harder. And you were just in a in a place that Galway couldn't get the quick, easy ball. So the extra man in Limerick's defence was invariably finding that ball. Dan Morrissey did an outstanding job in Connor Whelan. When he eventually was the, was handed the task of marking him, I think in the second half Connor got two possessions in the whole game in the whole in the whole second half. So that was really nullifying Galway's main threat. And from then on, you know Flanagan kicked into gear. 
Galan was a threat all game. Hegarty started to play. Morrissey started to play. Lynch, which was really key in midfield for me. He was getting on a lot of ball in the first half, but he was crowded out by Galway. He was able to start linking the play. And once Keane Lynch is able to link, link the play, he will pick off the best pass available to the best player in space. They were dominant in the half-back line, dominant in the full-back line. Galway literally could not get a sniff in the last 20 minutes of that half, and it was it really was phenomenal. The biggest the biggest thing for me is Limerick like to play with space. Some of the grounds, even including the Gaelic grounds, you know, th- th- there was this whole debacle about the Munster final that Limerick wanted it in Cork, you know, because it's a bigger field and it's a nice open place, and they really tend to play well in Parky Cueve. Clare wanted Turles, Semple Stadium, more condensed, or the Gaelic rounds, as it turned out, which suited their style of play. You know, Limerick are happy to obviously play it at home, but they're very comfortable in Croke Park. It really has become a fortress for them. The last time they lost there was 2019 in that semi final to Kilkenny, and that was a one point defeat. You know, they, they really made a great comeback in that game against Kilkenny. But I think it's a huge, huge factor, as much as Kilkenny have loved it over the years there, the Limerick players thrive on playing at Croke Park. They have the space to express themselves. You know, it's in front of a full house. It is the best stadium to play in. The pitch is perfect. You know, the set, the setting is perfect. And as, as Declan Hannon said a few weeks ago, we were doing a Zoom call with him. You know, if you're playing at Croke Park, you know you're at the business end of the season. There's no, you know, for the Dublin footballers, it's invariably, you know, a home ground. And there's lots of talk, obviously, about that. But for, for, for a team like Limerick to be so comfortable there is a, is a huge thing. Because I was talking to, like, doing a good bit of work with the paper this week. In the last week, with, with regards to interviewing ex players and different things, and Croke Park was a huge, huge factor for Limerick teams. You know, the 07 you were up against a, a wonder Kilkenny team, so no one was surprised the Limerick last that. But you look at 94 and 96, very winnable games against good Offaly and Wexford teams, to be fair. Offaly then followed up in 98 with another win with the bones of that team as well. We even go back to 1980 when the last from a winning position against Galway, you know, 73. You know, waiting 45 years to win in All-Ireland, it's a huge, huge millstone that was around every Limerick team's neck. You know, and in 18, 2018, they broke that. And they were enjoying playing in Crow Park at the epic game against Cork, followed by that win over Galway. And they've just been so good there since. You look at 2020, great game at Galway in the semi-final again. You know, the, the very tight game, Limerick edge by four or five, or three points, I think, in the end, sorry. Went out to beat Waterford in that COVID 2020 final as well. The following year, something similar. Waterford hit them with everything in the first 20. Limerick held it. Very similar similar to me, the way that game went against Galway and the game against Waterford two years ago. And then obviously beating Cork. In, in to me, the, the best half of hurling I've ever seen from any team in the 21 final. And obviously beating Galway and Kilkenny there as well last year. So I think that is a big, big deal as well, it is Limerick loving playing Croke Park and you enter it, it's multifaceted you look at someone like Car- Caroline Currid who's been hurled for the work she's done with every team she's been with and yeah. and I think the one-to-ones she does not that we know anything about it, it it's very in-house and private but it has to have an effect and if you you do have to go back to 2018 I was reminded of this during the week as well where Limerick in the two Scalic rounds one on the night and one of the training nights in the lead up to the all Ireland final had noise from Croke Park. They, they, they replicated the noise of Croke Park going around the Gaelic grounds. Just they went through the parade. They did, did all these things, supposedly. You know, certainly the, the speakers thing did happen because there was plenty of noise complaints coming out on a Tuesday evening where, no, where nothing was supposed to be on the Gaelic grounds. So these things mattered. Preparation matters. You know, the, the one thing you will know about Limerick coming into this game, they're not going to change their system. They're not going to... They backed themselves and it was very, very... Interesting to hear John Kiley reinforce that in the media day as well, that he's not concerned by their names. Of course, they're going to look at Kilkenny and where they can find, try and find weaknesses. Of course they are and try and exploit their weaknesses. But on the other foot, Limerick will back themselves to beat any team that come up against this Limerick team. We'll see. We'll take what you have and we still think we'll come out. You've seen that with, with the way Tony Kelly has played in Munster final the last couple of years, last year in particular scoring mammoth scores against Limerick over the last four or five years because Limerick backed themselves to outscore Tony Kelly and Clare. You know, and that's outside of one game this year, they've either drawn or beaten Clare, you know, in, in, on the back of that. But they trust everything they do in training to replicate in the match day. And, you know, it's going to be hard for any team to beat them. 
Yeah, and I, and I suppose like even when you're talking about Limerick backing themselves and, and John Coyley saying what he's saying, like even that's even true. The the amount of injuries obviously he's have had as well. And obviously last year Keane Lynch was missing for large parts and was obviously missing for the final and, and the semi final. And obviously this year you've had no Sean Finn and obviously Declan Hannon gets injured as well. So what's your thoughts been on on how Limerick have reacted to those two injuries and ultimately could we see any of them feature on Sunday? The, the reaction is next man up mentality. I mean, this goes back to to 2020 where Mike Casey and Richie English did their cruciates in the run up to the to the first game against. Um, I think it was it was a Clare in the COVID affected Munster Championship in All Ireland in 2020. You know, mm. I mean, Mike Casey and Richie English were starting players at that stage. You know, and Mike Casey then did it the following year again. He he he. Well, he did his cartilage the second year in his knee. So he went from cruciate, and he spoke fairly, fairly candidly about that, um, and the, and that media day last week as well. You know, so it is next man up mentality, and and genuinely that's the way to take it. To lose Keen Lynch and Peter Casey has to be, you know, Peter Casey was having one of the great All Ireland finals in twenty twenty one against Cork when the cruciate went. He'd five points of scored after twenty minutes, was giving Cork a torrid time. You know, and his knee went, and then Keane had his issue issues, came back, and then wasn't right. Peter the same, wasn't fully at the races by the business time last year, came on the semi-final and final, as, as you mentioned, Aaron Keane injured as well. To lose Sean Finn was a, is a massive, massive deal. You know, Dan Marcy has made full back his own since since 2020. I know he went back out wing back last year when Kyle went up the field, back back into the forward line. Dan is just so at home at fullback. He is Mr. Dependable in this Limerick team. Barry Nash has changed the way corner back play has gone. So they're two certainties. And it was at the start of the year, as good as Mike Casey's been. It was him and Sean Finn. And you're not going to dislodge Sean Finn too easy. Like so, Mike Casey's been able to deputize for him. And it's a huge, what a replacement to have, like a guy who's an outstanding defender. You know, the bigger one maybe, and, and this is saying something, because Declan Hannon is so key. I don't mean bigger in the sense Sean Finn is a generational defender. I don't think I've ever seen a, a corner back as good as him. Just so good at everything he does. Marshall's defender or, or attacker so, so well. One one example I'll give you in the league final when Old Cody was through on goals, met with Sean Finn. Old Cody, I think, changed direction three times and Sean Finn trailed with him. He couldn't get away from Sean Finn got a hook on the shot. He was two on goals, an easy save for Nicky Quaid. That's like the best, one of the best defenders ever, maybe. Marking potentially one of the greatest forwards if on Cody keeps going the tra trajectory he is. But the Declan Hannon one is huge. It's absolutely huge for Limerick. They have a, a ready-made replacement in Mike Casey for Sean Finn. Easy slots in and, and, and you know, will do a fantastic job. But Declan Hannon up to that point, it, up to the Galway game, it played in 36 to 37 you know, John Kiley games in the championship. So that shows how important he is to this setup. He is he's the guy who sits in front of the full back line. Such a good reader of the game, but so important to delivery into the forward line as well. He is so good at everything. He comes out and he's he's a he's a threat from 80, 90 yards as well with a shot. Very accurate in front of goals, as has been a forward in the past as well. Just does so many good things. He's always an outlet to take possession off a player who's under pressure coming out with the ball. But he's the leader of this Limerick team as well. William O'Donoghue has played countless times at centre-back for his club, in the Limerick Championship, and beyond that as well in Munster and all Ireland's club series. You know, a very much able replacement, which you're going to miss. Any team is going to miss the likes of Declan Annan and Sean Finn. Yes, next man up mentality. You know, and, and we believe, rumour has it, that there's a couple of more injury sins with Richie English and Jimmy Quilty, who's, who's a... Doesn't usually make the 26 new player in the panel, but Richie English has been the cover for Limerick's full back line since my case since my case has gone from on the bench early on to starting. So if Richie and what we believe the two of them have done cruciate, so that's another cruciate for Richie English, if that's the case, you know. So that that that's that's where the squad depth is going to be tested even further. If one of the full back line goes down, you know, you're looking at guys that don't have as much championship experience as Richie and Mike Casey. You know, and it does take a hit in the squad. You lose two of the players of that caliber and you lose maybe one of the replacements for those players when it hits you in the squad. But Limerick won't panic. They will literally say, next man up. It has been the way, it, it kind of ironic coincidence that the, a lot of the talk on that media day between John Kiley, Mike Casey and David Reedy was how lucky they were in the four-week gap from Munster to the All-Ireland semi-final. They got no injuries. Keane was back fully fit. Declan, we knew, was, was already out at that stage. 
like Roshan has, has, has done his cruise shit as well. So his his year was always over. So you know, you're you're gonna be tested. I mean, it's the nature of the championship, you have to be tested with injuries and stuff. Every team has gone through it. They will have that next man up mentality, and it wouldn't surprise him in the slightest. We don't know the nature of the, the extent of Declan's injury. It certainly ruled him out of the Munster final. He only came back to training the Wednesday after the Galway game. You know, so it's a week of full training before things wind down. He will be doing everything possible to get into that starting 15, if not the 26. Whether Limerick take a gamble on his fitness, I doubt it. I doubt they will, you know, because it's such an important position. And sure, if Declan's knee gives way after 10 minutes, you're wasting a substitute as well. And it's a big boost to Kilkenny to see a guy like that going off the field. So, you know, th those injuries, we, we just don't know with Declan. I don't see him starting. That's my own view. I'm not privy to any information that tells me that because it, it, it's like the Fort Knox trying to get anything information from that Limerick squad, and rightly so as well. So, yeah, they're, they're de definitely going to be a losses. Well, Sean's definitely out, but Declan... You know, even having him on the bench would be a huge boost for Limerick, and I think that's where we could see him. Yeah, because I suppose it is a testament to, to the Limerick panel that even when you have had injuries or you have had players go missing, you, you have others to, to slot in and, and make an impact. And even the return of Keen Lynch as well, like coming back into the side in the semi-finals, and as you said before, like he's he's been missing for large parts of the year and he's obviously had to recover from long-term injury it's you know it, it obviously takes time to, to get back to his best and everything else but his performance in the semi-final was, was absolutely brilliant and I suppose it was a throwback to the vintage Keen Lynch that we saw in the 2021 all Ireland final and how key could he be going into this final like having him back as well like that's such a such a huge boost from a from a Limerick point of view absolutely a, a, a fully fit Keen Lynch which we had in the Galway game, we haven't had since probably, I think it was the, the second game last year. He, he, he where, where early on his his issues started in the second game of the Munster Championship last year. The beating Cork, he was outstanding against Cork, and the second game last year kind of kind of pulled up, and that that was pretty much it. He came back as you as you said earlier for the semi final, but wasn't the same. You know, it wasn't the same. Keen Lynch coming off the bench, and the injuries continued into this year. We thought he was back. During the league, he was fine during the league, really building with each game, but the, the 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 injuries persisted and you could see it. You could see it in the Munster Championship. Started the, the first day against Waterford, wasn't himself. Started against uh, Clare the next day as well, wasn't himself. And I think he came off injured in that game as well and played on and wasn't right for the Tipperary game. Came off injured in that game. Cork, the, the Cork game, so came on the last minutes, visibly hobbling in the, in the Cork game. And then something similar in the Munster final where, where he wasn't needed to come off the bench. But John Kiley insisted after that game, win over Clare that Keane will be fully ready for the semi-final. And my God, wasn't he? He was outstanding. Took a while to settle. He was, and again, reverting back to midfield from his centre-forward position as well. You know, going back to where he was in 2018, you know, that was a big, big boost, I think, for Limerick and a big help to Darrow O'Donovan. It's like you lose William O'Donoghue, who's such a, a workhorse and, and you're the guy who gets Limerick going from a physical point of view so often as well. He really is your go-to, you know, enforcer, for want of a better word, William O'Donoghue. And then you just bring a completely different type of player. Keane's well able to look after himself as well. Physically, a physical beast as well. But I think it was a Donal Cusick to christen him the Harry Potter of hurling. And when Keane's on full form, that's exactly what he is. He's a wizard. He really sees things that people just don't see. The skill level is on a different different stratosphere. And he, he's just I mentioned earlier, the link play he can he can provide for that Limerick team is just outstanding. Maybe even better at midfield. You know, there's talk, there's been talk over the last couple of weeks since the Galway game. Could Limerick throw a red herring of putting Kyle back into the forwards? I don't see it happening because Kyle has been outstanding at wing back, and you just don't want to mess mess around, especially with the injuries Limerick have had. But if Sean Finn hadn't got injured. It was talk Dan Morrissey could go back out wing back. Mike Casey could come in full back. You know, Kyle could be set free up to, up into the forwards again just to give a bit of momentum up there when Keane wasn't right. But the, you, you said it like, I mean, Keane Lynch in the 2021 All Ireland final, basically for, for every bit of Limerick success outside of little spots last year that he missed, he has been exceptionally important to this Limerick setup. Again, it goes back to that next man up mentality. And as a, in, in a funny one, He's the next man up after Declan got injured, coming back into the team. But Keane, you can only imagine that Keane will be so much better for getting that 70 minutes, the full 70 minutes behind him. 
you know, and getting ready for the All Ireland final. He must be buzzing in training since the Galway game, and you know, he's he's going to be crucial for Limerick against Kilkenny, no question. He's the one player we kind of glossed over. What are the differences between the two? Well, there's one huge difference: a fit Keen Lynch coming into the Limerick team, irrespective of if Declan Hannan's playing or not, or even without Sean Finn. A fit Keen Lynch could win you a game on his own for what he can provide from a scoring point of view and from a creative point of view. You know, so that he's a huge, huge boost for Limerick. Again, you, you we mentioned that David Reedy has come in to start in his absence. And, you know, Limerick were so comfortable moving Keane into midfield purely on the back of David Reedy's form. He's been so often kind, the super sub, making impacts in the, in the, in the semi final and final last year, having huge impacts off the bench. Um, he stepped into the starting berth in the Munster final, created Aaron Galan's goal, the beautiful ball in from the left wing in the Gaelic grounds on that day. He was very good against Galway. Limerick actually really needed him. He started winning the ball, came a bit deeper, you know, in that first half, kind of got on a bit more ball from a creative point of view. He was instrumental. Darren Galan's second goal with that run through the heart of, of, the, of the Galway defence. Not the greatest pass in the world, but they still got the goal. But yeah, I think he's growing with every single game he plays, his confidence. So like they're, they're, they'll have full, you know, John Kiley mentioned it after the game against Clare that he could not leave David Reid or Graham Mulcahy off the team because they were performing so well in the in the training matches that it, it, it would have been detrimental to the Limerick team if they hadn't started. And Reedy has just gone on leaps and bounds from even the Munster final. And his importance is growing with each game. So he's likely to start at centre forward. If Declan Hannan doesn't make it and, and Keane, Keane will slot in at midfield, you imagine with William O'Donoghue staying at centre back. He's been huge. Cahill O'Neill, I've mentioned already. I think Cahill O'Neill has been an outstanding underage hurler with Limerick. Everyone's known him from a few years out. He's starting to get the physicality he needed. He's a big, big lad. He's a strong lad. He's starting to use He certainly used it against Galway. He won a couple of frees at vital times. He, you know, he threw a shoulder in as well, which is no harm. You know, to let someone know you're around as well. He got a yellow for it, and it was a yellow. You know, guys like him, I said, Graham Mulcahy, you know, he, he's got another new lease of life this year from somewhere. Unbelievable servant to Limerick. And so much trust in Graham Mulcahy in this team. But we mentioned Peter Casey a while ago. I think Peter Casey had his best game for Limerick against Galway since he came off injured in that 21 all Ireland final. He's been struggling since, from the start of the year, to find his real... Real form. He's, he's kind of doing a different role. He's doing a fairly hard working role. He, he's dropping into the half forward line like Graham Mulcahy does so well, helping out in midfield. Peter Casey would love nothing better to be in and around the 21, but he's sacrificing that play for, for the team, like so many players and, and every team do. But he's, he, he really, for me, came into form, looked really back to his old self. And I go back to the Croke Park factor with that, the enjoyment they have in Croke Park. But yeah, going back to Keane Lynch, it's, it's like a new player because Limerick haven't had him. You know, since 2021, arguably on a consistent basis, and if he's in fine form against Kilkenny, you know that could be that could be the winning and losing of the game. Yeah, Kurt says here, uh, my take repeat of last year's result: Limerick to win and become the only only the third team in hurling history to complete four in a row. I suppose, obviously, we're speaking a lot about like Keane Lynch and and obviously the form of Aaron Glan, but is is there any weakness in this Limerick team? Like when you actually look at it because obviously going for four in a row obviously be uh, five all Orleans in in 16 years did or six years the the amount of obviously monster titles you've won in a row as well because is there any worries there is there any weaknesses you think that maybe kilkenny could possibly exploit on the day yeah it's it's a tough question to answer because no team has has fully done it i think i think the biggest the first thing you have to do with limerick is master intensity and physicality that won't be a problem for Kilkenny. So that will kind of level itself off. TJ Reid, as I said, scored from freeze, a lot of freeze. I think he got 9, 10 points from freeze last year. That's one area where you can hit Limerick. It's been interesting for me in watching, certainly Galway did a lot more than they've done in the past. They were going for sharp puckouts, and then Aina Murphy was coming out to about the 14 or 21 even and launching over the Limerick half-back line. That Limerick half-back line, they're, like their colossus, if, if Garrod Hegarty had been picked there, and, you know, as was suggested, as the team was named, Garo, you would have had Garo Diggerty, Kyle Hayes and Dermot Burns. Sure, no one would want to drop a ball on top of the three of them. It'd be a waste of time because they're they're just going to physically, no matter who they're marking. So teams have started. And Kilkenny started it really for me. In the, and maybe even going back as far as 2020 with, with Tipperary, trying to bypass that half-back line 
Tipperary in the Munster final when Limerick came back to beat them. They were outstanding in the first half. They bypassed that half back line. And, and it's just to get quicker ball into the full forward line. And it's nothing about the Limerick full back line. I think that's the team thing Kilkenny will try again because they got a good bit of joy of it, from it last year with TJ in, in particular um, being, the, being the, the focal point of it. Um, outside of that, I think, I think, you know, where the weakness is, it's very hard to say. Because you do, you do play against Limerick, you do that, but you, then you've the likes of Gerard Hegarty and Tom Morrissey dropping back into midfield, helping out the half back line so much. You've even seen TJ Reid doing that in the semi final and Leinster final this year as well for Kilkenny, because uh, TJ is playing a bit more of a freer role this year, which could be a thing. TJ will hit into pockets, but that's a danger because TJ is going to score from anywhere 100 yards out. If no one's marking him, he will score. He, he doesn't miss. Like they're, they're, it's, he, he is one of the greats, and you know, and he, he will need attention and so someone will have to be on him if he does drop like he like he did in the in the semi-final drop anywhere all over the field TJ was so I, I think that the other thing that and it's so hard to to even call this a weakness but lack of pace is probably in the in the defensive line a major issue outside of Kyle and Barry Nash so that left hand side maybe you 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 wouldn't you know target too much but that, that, again it's not they're slow but I'm just you, you have a job getting the ball into that full forward line to try and expose a weakness maybe there. Dan, maybe not the quickest, but his brain gets him gets him to the right place at the right time always. Barry's quick. Mike Casey's no slouch. Kind of in the in the Munster final, Aaron Shanahan, you know, looked looked like he had the number of him when he came on. But Mike Casey, I think, was arguably Limerick's best defender in the semi-final as well. So, I mean, you're talking about potential weaknesses as a lack of pace. But when have you ever seen Limerick exposed for pace in that defensive line? It doesn't happen. That's just me looking for something maybe that isn't even there because teams have, like, you don't see Limerick exposed for pace. You know, players, and maybe it's a good positional sense as well, you know, that, 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 that Limerick are able to maybe cover for that rather than be exposed. For, I think Galway did it slightly. They've managed to get in behind, into pockets of space, in behind that half-back line for large periods in that first half. And again, didn't fully exploit. And Limerick kind of shored it up after 25 minutes, you know, uh, that. But yeah, I think I think maybe maybe that's one area is, is getting the ball, sharp puck outs from Omar. No, Murphy is such a brilliant delivery of a ball into a forward line as well that, you know, it, it could cause problems. I think Kilkenny got a good bit of joy off that last year, something they look to exploit again. Yeah, no, like it probably is clutching at straws ever so slightly. Like when when, when you do have this Limerick side, like bidding to to win four in a row and and been as dominant as, as they have been over the last couple of years. But like, what's been your your take on Kilkenny? Then obviously this year, obviously a bit of a change in management. Obviously Derek Lane coming in for for Brian Cody, and I suppose it's been a phenomenal first year from from his point of view. Like get to the league final, get to the All Ireland final. They obviously get through the the Leinster final as well with that late Killian Buckley goal and. I suppose one thing you would say about Kilkenny is that they definitely they never die. Like they're they're, they're always in it to the final couple of minutes. And um, like how how many times do we see them get late goals or, or late points? And Owen Murphy obviously pulling off you know tremendous saves and everything else. But what's been your take on Kilkenny this year with with Derek Lynn coming in for for Brian Cody? I definitely think the first thing there has been a slight change in play. I mentioned Richie Reid dropping a bit more you know, this season than he did last season and becoming kind of that quarterback role. I didn't see that from Richie Reid last year. Certainly didn't in the final where he was kind of all over the shop in a way. He didn't know where he should be. He was trying to track one player and sit at the same time. But I think it's been a deliberate thing. The interesting thing is, you know, Lim we've, we've spoke about Limerick's bench. I think Kilkenny have more options off the bench this year. You mentioned Killian Buckley mm -hmm. coming on to go to, to get that goal in the Leinster final. Podrick Walsh didn't, hasn't started you know, in a while, you've the likes of Killian Buckley, Walter Walsh, Padraig Walsh, Richie Hogan, and Richie may be on his last, his last run in this Kilkenny setup, you know, so probably have a better bench. You know, I mentioned Tom Phelan earlier, he's a different, a workhorse of a player. Kenny, like, was a star player for them last year, has been used more of a, in a substitute role. Adrian Mullen is an outstanding midfielder. He's another year older, more experienced. And I've mentioned Don Cody having an outstanding year. They have, you've mentioned, you don't beat Kilkenny easy. You know, you just don't. And they have a happy knack as well in, 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 in bygone years of introducing a bit of a shock. Maybe it was a Cody tendency to do this. Introducing a player no one was expecting to start. 
that has been going great in training. The likes of Taggy Fogarty, winning man of the match in an all Ireland final. Just have the feeling that I think Derek Ling might sp- spring a surprise as well. And maybe, I mentioned Billy Drennan earlier, hasn't seen any action. He's a serious, serious talent. You know, mm. maybe they'll spring him and start him and try and catch Limerick on the hop. But the one thing you mentioned there, you don't beat Kilkenny easy. You just don't, no matter what state they're in. They, they haven't won an all Ireland since 2015. They've been in transition. Kilkenny's transition is getting to an all Ireland final, Leinster final. You know, maybe not winning it. That's their transition instead of winning it. You know, other teams' transitions that don't win anything for 10 years and have three different groups and sets of players in that 10-year period. But Kilkenny have managed to, to blood blood players. And, and and these things like Owen Murphy's save and Killian Buckley's goals, they don't happen by accident. They're in the right place at the right time. Was, even last year, Limerick, in, in, in a lot of ways, could have been up by a fair bit going into that last quarter. But Kilkenny got the goals at the right time. Kept him in the game. Richie Hogan leveled the game with a, just a ridiculous score. You know, so Kilkenny will be with you. There's no question of that. They will get, die to win this. And, and there's an element as well with the with the whole four in a row thing. Like, you're not going to find a, a prouder hurling county than Kilkenny. We all know that, you know. So that four in a row thing, it's a sideshow. Of course it is. It's, it's going to be mentioned by the likes of us constantly. It's a sideshow but, but within the camp. But in the back of the minds, Kilkenny players should be thinking, hold on a second, we're, we're, we're following on from the lads of yesteryear, not even that long ago, the the, 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 the two, late 2010s team, early 2010s team from, from 06 to 09, you know, their four in a row team. We, we have to, you know, try and, and keep that intact. It is a side show I mentioned, but you'd imagine, given the pride that they have, that it will play some factor. won't be mentioned by Derek Ling, not for one second, but maybe the players will get together and say, hold on a second, no, we need you know, for themselves and for the county itself, because because that eight year run, if they don't come out being successful against Limerick, that's a long run for any Kilkenny team. They've had a lot of good players that have that have been on that are on this team since that time that haven't won one. You know, so they have the likes of Walter and Richie with mul- multiple All Irelands, you know, over the years. But there's a lot of that Kilkenny team that, that haven't tasted All Ireland success yet, which is rare for a Kilkenny team. But they'll if they do win on Sunday, they'll see it. We're on for a bit of a dynasty here. We've a, a lot of young lads coming through. Like you said, if, if David Blanchfield doesn't make it, Dara Corcoran's already made a replacement. Saw a lot of Dara playing his Fitzgibbon Cup at UL in the last year or two. Outstanding talent there as well. They have them all over the park. It's Kilkenny. They have hurlers coming out their ears, you know, but they're up against what 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 is described of a, of a team of a generation. And that's what makes this thing, this game so fascinating. Again, similar to last year, is that the the roles are kind of reversed from where we were in 07, where Kilkenny's great team up against the Limerick team that a lot of people felt did very well to make a final, which they did. And Kilkenny went for the jugular straight away with, with Eddie Brennan on Seamus Hickey. Seamus, an outstanding player for Limerick, was 19, 20 at the time. And they, they were cutthroat, got early goals. Limerick were playing catch up. Limerick tried to do something similar last year with Garrod Egerty's goal, going for the kill straight away. Weren't able to get the second goal. And Kilkenny stayed in touch. So I think it, the roles are reversed in that sense. But when you can bring on the likes of Killian Buckley, Podrick Walsh, if he doesn't start, you know, the likes of Billy Drennan, maybe, Walter Walsh, Richie Hogan, you have all these guys. And and, and you've the likes of Massey Keown and, and Billy Ryan still haven't hit full tilt yet for me this season in Kilkenny. So, I, like I said, they've stumbled their way to an All-Ireland final in a sense with ha- what happened in Leinster, you know, and then in the semi-final against Clare. You know, as, as I mentioned, Claire maybe not getting their tactics right in the first half, and Kilkenny owed Owen Murphy a fair debt for that save as well. So I think I, I just keep going back to, to Kilkenny's bench versus Limerick's bench. Limerick have had much harder bench with likes of Connor Boylan, who I haven't mentioned yet, always contributes when he comes on. But Kilkenny have won all of a sudden that, you know, can contribute. Walter Walsh came on at halftime in last year's All Ireland final. For me, he changed the game. You have a him and Dan Morris, he had a titanic battle that Walter got the better of more often than not uh, in, when he came on right wing forward and then Marcy and left wing back so have these things but from Limerick's point of view they will back themselves I've already said that you have a guy like Kyle Hayes someone needs to ask me or ask anyone else and try and find a way you, you talk about stopping Limerick where are the weaknesses but one of the strengths is Kyle Hayes at left wing back because A he'll do his job defensively he'll do it very well but when Kyle Hayes goes off on a gallop just no one can stop him. I mean, got two yeah. points from the left wing in, in the 
in the All Ireland semi final. The second one was an eighty yard run. And we, you were kind of looking going back to the All Ireland or the semi the Munster final in twenty twenty with that famous goal against Tip. You know where he rang for in from his own forty five, and just couldn't catch him. You know, and it was a similar thing. Three Galway players tried to hit Kyle early. You know, before he took off, didn't matter a jot. And then he flicked the ball over the bar. And the impressive thing then was Seamus Flanagan pulled out as Kyle went around to try and make a bit of space. Seamus Flanagan reverted back to, to left wing back, left Kyle up, you know, take his little breather after scoring the point. So they're so well drilled, this Limerick team. But so are Kilkenny, you know, it's there's the, but the beauty of it, and maybe we'll get to this in a minute as well. The key matchups, you know, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere all over the field. We've touched on midfield, we've touched in different places. And that, again, it makes it so fascinating. I know I'm repeating myself. There's a there, there, there's you know a case to be made for a Kilkenny player dominating one one position or a Limerick player dominating that position as well. So they're so evenly matched. You asked about Limerick, what what has been the difference maybe the last couple of years and with this season? A Munster Championship, every team has caught up a bit. Every time Limerick go out to play now, they're like the Dublin footballers in their heyday. Every team wants to beat them. It is the thing. To beat this Limerick team at the moment, Clare found a way to do it in in the Gaelic rounds in April. You know, will Kilkenny do it? They're going to give it one fair rattle. Yeah, and I suppose you mentioned matchups there. I mean, like we we, we saw the battle obviously of Hugh Lawler and Aaron Glan last year. But what key matchups do you think could be definitive to, to who comes out on top on on Sunday? I think you've already hit it, Aaron. And, Aaron and you, you was outstanding against Clare as well. Um, in the semi final, he really seems to have grown into that fullback role um, for Kilkenny. I've seen him playing at centre-back at different times this year as well. Looks much more at home at fullback now. He's got a bit of pace about him. Aaron isn't the quickest in the world, but if you get a guy who can who can score a goal or catch a ball behind the fullback of the likes of Dahi Burke's quality and then in mid-air pirouette and then lands and he's facing the goal to try and bury it. He did something similar in the Munster final or the the Cork win, the, the win over Cork in Limerick's last round robin game in Munster to set up Seamus Lanning and pirouetted in the air and pop the ball off. I just think that's huge. It's absolutely huge. My Casey, which I expect to be my Casey or Dan Morrissey, that Marco and Cody, that's going to be massive as well because Cody's, as I said earlier, is just so, so good at the moment. Um, but yeah, Aaron Gillan, you know, he's just so good. He just, if he does, if he does perform today in Limerick win, I think. Shoe and I don't I don't think the bookies will even take any more bets on that one like that. He's a shoe in for earlier of the year, and which will be just on the side note, it'll be three years running if that is the case for the Patrick's Well Club in Limerick, the famed Patrick's Well Club, 2021 Key and Lynch, 22 Dermot Burns, and potentially 23 Aaron Gillan, which is an amazing feat. I'm not sure I'd have to look into it. If that's ever been done before. Um yeah. three players from the one club in some in successive years being hurler of the year. But yeah, I, I, I just think it's so key. Aaron, Aaron has just been so, so good for Limerick this year. Got better with every game. Like a, He was a Rolls-Royce against Galway the last day. And similar in the, in, in the semi-final last year against Galway, he was Limerick's best player. Um, battling midfield, I think Kilkenny may may throw a red herring in. I mentioned earlier about maybe Derek Arkin coming. I think you may see Padraig Walsh start. I think his experience alone would be a huge, huge lift for, for, for Derek Ling's side. But for me... I mean, if you Lawler can get on top of Aaron Gillan uh, in that game, Limerick may be in a bit of trouble because they, 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 their their whole attack this year. Seamus Flanagan's come into more form, but they've tried since the Cork game to isolate Aaron on his own in there, with Seamus withdrawing a good bit more and then running late in, in to help him out. If they can do that and Limerick do it, they they could expose Kilkenny. But if you Lawler can get on top of that matchup, you could be in for a very very interesting afternoon. Yeah, and, and as for Grote Hegarty, I mean, like, how how many times does he turn up in in all Ireland finals? Like, it, it seems to nearly be his his playground in many ways. Like as you said, he scored one five last year. I remember against Cork, he was phenomenal as well. Very good performance against uh, Waterford in the twenty twenty final. Like, he tends to always turn up and deliver. So, I mean, who who do you think could could end up picking him up? Could it be Dara Corcoran or maybe yeah, a or you you like Paddy you Paddy Deegan last year and. Wasn't Paddy's best day. Paddy got a couple of points from loose play, you know, but but his day was ruined by Garon Hegarty. And I think it was a big mistake by Brian Cody last year to not switch Paddy off him earlier because Garrod, last 10 minutes there, scored a couple of monster points as well, where Paddy was physically run around at that stage. And 
you know, he's key. I mean, I think your Oates' performance could be just as as important as Aaron Galland's. You mentioned it, Aaron, like that. I think it was 2-3 against Cork. It was seven points against Waterford in 2020. You know, and he didn't have the greatest 2021 either leading into that couple of bookmark moments. He was outstanding all the last year again. Um, has had his differences this year. Hasn't been easy for a girl, but there was enough to suggest against Galway with the two points he got were glorious shots. And he was more economical with his shooting as well. I mean, Garrod's economical with his shooting. Takes on the ones he can score early on. And then from long range, he's a huge threat. You know, because he's played centre back for his club numerous times. He, he, like he's a, he, they're a junior club inside Limerick City, St. Patrick's. You know, he's dominant at that level. He's dominant at every level he's ever played, really. You know, and 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 you know, he's it's not an easy mark. Because if you if you focus much on the likes of Aaron Gillan and Garrod, well, you're freeing up Seamus Flanagan, who loves Croke Park as well. You're freeing up Peter Casey, yeah. you're freeing up Tom Morrissey, who also happens to love playing in Croke Park. So, you know, you you do you do have to wonder, like, if you, if you focus on one, in a way, that's Garrod's job done. He's he's opened up the door for someone else and vice versa. So I, th- I think you're going to have something similar to man on man and see where you go from there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like, and, and that's the thing from a, from a Limerick perspective. Like, they just have so many ways to to hurt you. And that's before even mentioning, you know, some of the, the options that can come off the bench, like Cahill O'Neill, who's obviously been chomping at the bit to, to get in the side. But... In terms of the other ends, obviously from a Kilkenny perspective, you've got the likes of TJ Reid and Owen Cody, obviously in in phenomenal form. And as you said there, like from a Limerick perspective, maybe they don't place too much emphasis on, I suppose, you know, they focus on what they're good at and they focus on, on doing their own jobs first. But what kind of plans do you think Limerick would, would have for someone like Owen Cody or TJ Reid and who could end up picking them up? It's an interesting one. It'll be interesting to see where, where TJ lines up from the start. As I said earlier, I think he has more a roving role. He kind of has a free role, a bit like Tony Kelly with Clare this year. And that will suit TJ down to the ground. Um, Limerick won't, won't, you know, if TJ goes wandering, they'll stay in their six, you know, and their two midfielders dropping. They won't deviate from assist, the, the system they have. Um, it'd be my case here, Dan Marcy, I feel feel that will do the man-marking job on own Cody depending on if all Cody drifts as well. But Limerick won't deviate, you know. I think it's fascinating. This is what I think. I think Kilkenny will definitely try and up, try and upset that, that you know, structure that Limerick have defensively. Um, you know, it, 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 you're just looking at phenomenal players. Own Cody will do damage at some stage in this game. TJ Reid will cause trouble at some stage in this game. Like at the other end of the field, you'd imagine Limerick's forwards will do the same. The argument is, and, and this is where I, I'm naturally going to be pushing towards Limerick, as you, as you may have guessed, um, I just think Limerick's starting six forwards, if I imagine them to be as good as Kilkenny have been, I don't think they've met a group of forwards that are that good yet this year. You know, you mentioned Garrod. If, if, if by some stretch that Declan's back, Keane will slot in to centre forward. Keane, a fit Keane Lynch at centre forward can cause havoc. That's what I mean by Richie Reid, not knowing what to do. He didn't know what to do with Kyle last year because Kyle was roving all over the pitch. Keane will do exactly the same if he's there. And David Reedy will do a good job as well. He'll cause enough headaches when he's there. But I just think, and Tom Morrissey, as I mentioned, is just like his brother Dan, Mr. Dependable in this Limerick team. It's it's 7, 8 out of 10 rating every time he goes onto the field. If he misses a couple of shots, he doesn't care. He's shooting them the next time as well. you know. And that, that's, that, that kind of attitude is, is phenomenal. To have as well his confidence never wavers and he keeps going for his shots. Tom like Tom had an outstanding 2020 final as well. And you know, he got a goal in 18, great game in 18. You know, probably hasn't the last couple of games hit his top form, having been Limerick's best player up to maybe the, the Cork game this year. Um, it's the first time he was taken off all year, I think, in the championship. So so Tom will be searching for a bit of form as well. But yeah, I just think the Limerick six, the six Limerick forwards and maybe. The two or three they can bring on in the in the form of Graham, in the form of of Connor Boylan, in the form of Colin O'Neill, as we've mentioned at length. You know, I mentioned Richie Richie Hogan, Walter Walsh, maybe past their best. We were looking at the likes of Adam English, Colin O'Neill, Connor Boylan. Certainly, any not not anywhere near their their best. You know, they're still Connor Boylan's in his in his twenty four. Is could all he be twenty three, twenty four? Is all he is, and seems like he's been around for a long time. Made huge impacts in last year's championship. Not so much this year, but he's he's another dependable player that always comes on 
in games for Limerick invariably does anyway. A guy I mentioned earlier too, Adam English, you know, his first touch in in, in championship hurling was as a blood sub in the Munster final. He came on and he scored a point with his first touch. You know, he was able to come in in that white heat of battle, first touch of the ball over the bar from 80, 90 yards. Unlucky not to score again when he came on fully. You know, I, I, this guy is a superstar in waiting as well. He really, really is. Didn't have the best tw- under-20 championship this year with Limerick. Limerick were kind of flat in that. Um, but Adam is a supreme talent. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if he came on all in final day and happened to make a big impact for Limerick. They've used him sparingly, used him in a Munster final, used him against Galway, came on late in that game as well. But there's a reason he's been brought on. It's obviously doing it at training. Um, he is genuinely... We've spoken about Colin O'Neill. Adam's already physically there. He was injured all last year and didn't make a huge impact in either Fitzgibbon Cup or with the 20s or with the Limerick Seniors. But as a 19-year-old was on the panel uh, last year, um, you know, he's he, he's deputised at midfield this year, but he's a forward by trade, wing forward at his very best. He can cause damage. And it wouldn't surprise me if Limerick are in need of a bit of a spark late on that Adam could provide it. But yeah, look, there's matchups all over the field. From Limerick's point of view, you know, it's a real, it's a real type of, you know, we we know what we have, you know, in our forward line, we're going to trust what we have, and it, it's a case of, you know, this is what we have, Kilkenny. Can you stop us? The answer last year was no. They came very, very close, but that combined Limerick t- Limerick forward line last year, I think it was something along the lines of one thirteen of that one twenty one or one thirty one, I should say one five from. You know, from the likes of Gerald Hegarty, Tom Marcy with four points, you know, and 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 uh, Kyle Hayes with four points on the day as well. So that's what you're up against with that half forward. And obviously, we mentioned it, it may not be the case with David Reedy, well capable of scoring as well. And that 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 will be probably I've mentioned that you uh, you and Aaron is probably the key battle. But as always, the, the half back lines on either side, the half forward lines on either side. That is where modern hurling is won and lost. If the half back line is battle is won by Limerick, if Irma Burns can get, get on ball to deliver inside, well, that's Limerick, you know, in a good place, and and vice versa at the other end. If they, if that half back line of Richie Reid, David Blanchfield, and for argument's sake, Paddy Deegan, if that's what it is, you know, can get on top of that Limerick trio, well, it's going to be great news for Kilkenny. Yeah, ultimately, then, what do you what do you think? And obviously, you're going to back Limerick to uh, to, to win the game. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be. Allowed back in maybe after after the final, but what do you think in terms of margin of victory, or how do you think it will go, or how do you? Yeah, think I, I think I said to you said to you last year when we were discussing the same game, as it happened that I I I fancied Limerick win. It's hard not to back back them, you know. It's very hard not to have faith in this group of players and management because they keep coming back. They keep, and it's no secret that they do peak for Croke Park. They take a chance that they may get through the league and. You know, up the, you know, up the tempo of Croke Park, you know, up and improve as they go on the year, and that has been the case in in twenty, certainly twenty one and twenty two as well. So they've improved as they've gone on the year, but you know, so it's hard not to have faith in them. From winning margin, I am going with Limerick, as you mentioned. I probably wouldn't be allowed back back into work or anywhere else for that matter if I if I didn't. Um, I I actually think Limerick could win this four or five points purely because the way they played in that second half against Galway. Galway hit them with everything. and anyway. Galway in the second half looked punch drunk. They had no ideas left. I think Kilkenny will, will bring an almighty challenge. And it wouldn't surprise me either if Kilkenny come out on the winning side. And that's not me hedging my bets. It's just the nature of it. But I just saw in, in that second half, like I was speaking to a few people today about this as well, and, and, and in some fairly knowledgeable hurling people's eyes, that's the best they've seen in Limerick. Outside of that first half against Cork, was that second half against Galway? They were so on it everywhere. They were just so dominant all over the field. And you know, look, if they can even up that further, which I expect them to, you know, they they could go off and 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 really do damage in the first half. And I mean, no one expected what happened in twenty twenty one to happen to Cork and what Limerick did that day. Cork were just rabbits caught in the headlights, you know, and. You know, Limerick had an early goal through Garrod Hegarty in that game. They did the same last year. Um, Limerick, they're not the best team scoring goals. Kilkenny will need two or three goals. They'll need more than two goals to win this game. They got two goals last year, still didn't manage to outscore Limerick. I mean, you lose an all Ireland final scoring 226, as you mentioned. You know, it's heartbreaking mm-hmm. stuff because you've done everything 
to do that. The other side of the coin, Limerick haven't scored as much this year. Their scoring rate has been down. John Kiley mentioned it as well during the week that one place they really, really need to sharpen up is in front of goal. As good as they were against Galway, I think they had 16, 17 wides in that game. That's been a feature all year. And maybe that's why games in Munster have been a bit tighter as well. Um, so that's an area to improve on as well. But I think knowing this, just seeing this group of team, group of players, I mean, their hunger was questioned at the start of the year when they didn't start Munster as well as they have done. I can safely say, seeing these guys, they know they've, they've, they've a window of opportunity to be as successful as they possibly can. You know, you've the likes of Nicky Quaid, Declan Hannon's 30 this year, Aaron, or Graham Mulcahy's 20 or 32 now, I think. He's been around a long time. Um, you have the likes of William O'Donoghue, Gerard Hegarty in their late 20s. Will might be 30 this year. Um, you know, that that's the age profile. Like, you have the likes of Kyle Hayes, 25, 26, you know. Um, bonkers when you think about it. So, it's, mm. it's, it's, you know, they're still not, they're not an old team by any stretch of the imagination. So, and you have that youth coming in to, to keep that squad galvanized. So, I, I am going to go for them, as I said. I think it could be three, three to five points. I'm going with five. I just think if they hit form early and get if they get an early goal and tack on a few points immediately after it, could be a long day for Kilkenny because they shut up shop. They did it against Galway when they went five or six points up in the semi final. They really just put the didn't put the handbrake up. They just piled the pressure on Galway and Galway just had no answer. And I don't know do Kilkenny with this group of players as good as they are and as good as they may be in the next year or two with the younger lads coming through right now are they good enough to beat? To beat this Limerick team, I'm not so sure. Yeah, like I'd, I'd probably agree as well. It's, I'd probably go with Limerick by two or three, like especially after you clicked into gear the way that you did against Galway in that second half. Like it's it's, it's very hard to back against Limerick any day of the week with the form that you're in. So I'd probably back yourselves as well to, to ever so slightly come through it. But one thing for certain, anyway, like what you said there, like ringing through the, the age profile of some of the players. Like like this like Limerick Kilkenny definitely aren't going anywhere and we could very well be here this time next year again previewing the final and everything else because like neither side is going anywhere and as you said the underage is is very good for both counties so like we'll look, very uh, well be here again I'm next year across you, but the under twenty final last year Kilkenny and Limerick you know mm. in, the, in the under twenty final a lot of these players have broken through onto the onto the senior panels now I mentioned Billy Drennan who was outstanding in that final. Likes of Adam English last year, um, Aidan O'Connor's on that a guy who haven't seen much of really big talent coming through Limerick as well. From Bally Brown, Colin Coughlin, who we know plenty about, um, hasn't broken fully into the senior team yet, but will you know these guys are generational talents as well coming through the system? Kilkenny have them on their side as well. So you mentioned it outside of Clare, you know, who who, who seemed to be able to you saw this year a much better Clare against Kilkenny, maybe in the game they left behind. Beating Limerick, the only team to beat Limerick, you know, in a fair old while as well in Munster, the first team since 2019 to beat them in Munster. And of course, Limerick last lasted in the All Ireland Championship, you know, in, in 2019 as well. So, you know, the, the other teams are coming clear, of course, having won a minor as well this year. And um, they'll have players in the next couple of years to, to supplement what they have at the moment. Cork will come good having, having won that 20 this year. But it does look like Limerick and Kilkenny for the next couple of years could be the two teams really starting to, to dominate. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I suppose we'll go ahead and uh, and wrap this up here. Well, look, listen, Johnny, best of luck anyway for Sunday and hopefully for, for your point of view, Limerick come out on the right side and, um, yeah, parade the, the four in a row across the streets of Limerick in the coming days. Cheers, Aaron.